Jackie Capstick, and this is The Natural Healing Reel, my podcast, as um, all the natural methods and beautiful people that are helping us heal without all the drugs and medicine and giving us the tools to, to do that. And today, Sue Winsbury from uh, the UK is here as my guest. She is um, she's a mentor. She is a spiritual business coach. She is explaining and giving people the tools to energetically move themselves and, um, and have the understanding and tools to move themselves up to a better, higher frequency and releasing the old so that we can actually create a new future for ourselves. So welcome, Sue. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jackie. It's great to be here. And what a great intro. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go forward. Let's. I'm going to let you do the talking because uh, you have the gift to share here today, and I like to always do a lot of talking. So <laughs> you're just passing it over. <laughs> um, start maybe with a little bit of your bio, like how, what has been your journey to get you to have this understanding, and and then to a place where you're, you know, wanting to coach and share. So. I was, I had a real spiritual gift when I was a teenager. I kind of knew that there was more to life than just this body that we're in. How did you um, know that? Sorry. I just, I just had a sense. And I didn't come from a very spiritual family. I came from what I would call a very mainstream family. Um, and because of the age I am, there wasn't the joys of the internet. Uh, we had to go to our local library to get information and books and um, that was the only way of finding out anything so um, I have to say where I lived there wasn't I was in a little village in Surrey there weren't an awful lot of spiritual books in our local library but I read what I could and then I didn't know what to do with with any of it I didn't know where to go how to progress things so I kind of did the teenage thing and got into boys and drink and parties and clubs and did, did we grow up in the same group or <laughs> <laughs> i think maybe we did <laughs> i live in surrey too actually in canada <laughs> it's kind of funny Carry so on. um so yeah did all the all the things that um you do in your late teens early 20s worked in i actually worked in pr and marketing for many years and um had a career break when i had my boys and i came across a course on spiritual healing and it was in a very random advertisement. It was being held in an agricultural college of all places. And it just jumped out at me. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna try this stuff. If this stuff works, the only way to know is to just do it. And it was, for me, it felt like coming home when I started that course, when I started practicing healing, I was just like, oh, here I am. I found myself, I found my thing. This is, this is what I'm here to do. Awesome. Um, so that was amazing and then I kind of built up a, a holistic therapy business and I did more and more energy modalities did my coaching training and just as we tend to do in this business just trained in lots of different things and built up my knowledge and then it's just it's grown and it's evolved and the more work I've done on myself the more layers I've peeled back within myself the more my intuition has become kind of important and clear and inner guidance and I just feel without a shadow of a doubt that I've come onto the earth to be here for this time and to um, I've got a soul mission and it's to help guide and support and um, help others heal but from a very empowered place so um, for me healing is about empowerment it's not about rescuing or saving anyone or doing something to someone it's about empowering them to um embody their own healing like the fishing story right <laughs> yeah get them a fish but teach them how to fish right? yeah exactly that yeah yeah i think that uh what you're saying is really really key um for myself too i had to learn um how to implement the knowledge that i had because having the understanding is power but you don't actually have it the power working for you unless you start to put it 
to work, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. And we are all as as beings. I mean, we're all energetic beings as well as being in this human frame. But we're all we've got so much innate power that we've forgotten, or it's been kind of yeah, it's just been forgotten over eons and eons and eons. And we're all immensely capable of doing so much through our own healing through um our own energy that it's it's about opening it up opening up our gifts and really really connecting with who we are and what we're capable of and how do you do that that is what you're teaching right you're helping people and guiding them because i don't know i think that's the biggest thing is what I found out is that I don't know that we really do know who we are. We think that we do, or we think that we're our, our job and our house and our friends, or <laughs> I don't think we have really a clue for the most part of us of who we are. And then when you realize that it's like, well, how do you find out who you are? And then how do you love who you are? Right. It, it's a, it's a, it's a huge, I think it's huge. Right. Well, for myself, it was. Yeah. And I think learning to love ourselves is the, I guess that's the greatest journey that we're on most of the time, isn't it? Um, because when we're not as human beings, we're not very good at that. It doesn't come naturally. And, and we're not, um, we're not encouraged to love ourselves when we're certainly when I was growing up, it was, it was not something that was really, understood or encouraged or um taught it was just you know you were too big for your boots or you were too much or you know to this to that um <laughs> rather than just being encouraged to love who you were for yourself right so that's, it's, that's where the broken that's where we believe we're broken right because we were perceiving that we were broken based on those perceptions right yeah but none of us is broken thank god <laughs> <laughs> even when we think we are we're we're not actually and i think those times when we feel that we're broken are actually our greatest learning experiences yes if we allow ourselves that gift and that opportunity you're so right i mean it's such um a tough, tough thing to go through when you're struggling because I think sometimes you know we go down so far and and we just believe that that's our life now. Yeah. And I believe that you know it's just we weren't nobody's been given the information. Our parents weren't you know we're all taught to look outside of ourselves and you know go go to the doctor. You're not feeling good. You go to the doctor, right? <laughs> We don't have, you know, any of these amazing tools, little energetic things that I have learned to just kind of help myself in, you know, the moment, right? Or have that negative thought or whatever, count backwards from 10, right? It takes 10 seconds counting backwards, you can't think that thought. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, you don't, you're not going to go down in the energetic. Was that Abraham Hicks? I think they said every 16 seconds, if you don't clear a negative thought, another one is coming to it <laughs> and so it's uh i think that information is invaluable because if we um know that then we can at least start to help ourselves with you know different not everything works for the same right for everybody yeah ab absolutely different different modalities different techniques work for for different people and um i say that we can't be on it every 16 seconds <laughs> We're just not even awake enough, to, I don't think, right? We're not conscious yeah. of that usually, right? We have to give ourselves a little bit of slack as, yeah. as beings. But, but learning to just recognise those thoughts when they come in or, or intercept things or acknowledge patterns. Or I was, I was married to um, a man who was really, he was quite, he was very controlling. And um, I lost myself in that relationship but I have to take responsibility that I also allowed myself, I abandoned myself at that time because I didn't listen to my intuition. I didn't necessarily stand up for myself when that little voice inside me was going, oh no, that's, that's, not, 
that's not what you think you think this and I but I, I so I did abandon myself so I take full responsibility for my role in that relationship by the time it came out I had no confidence um you know I was I was starting from scratch and in my mind at the time it was, it was all his fault it was blame 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 and um I think it's when we start to really look at ourselves on a deeper level and go I I played a part in that too it's not all the other person's fault it's a two-way thing and that's to me that's radical self-responsibility and then doing the healing and the forgiveness which is one of my most favorite things it's so powerful uh, forgiving ourselves forgiving others so it's just an incredibly healing process absolutely that uh uh hopopono prayer yeah it's uh we did a month of that in uh a year-long coaching course that i did and boy oh boy <laughs> it's powerful right when you're doing it day after day and you're focusing on you know maybe the main person one person main person and I think what I learned was um it really all comes back down to ourselves even though we don't realize that we right it was that was what yeah. it did for me was really was forgiving myself for what you were just saying not knowing better and doing better right so then we get another cycle of shaming ourselves or <laughs> because another you know it's just you know one one just anyways it's just awareness right it's awareness and it's it's learning and we're always we're here to learn as souls we come in to learn we don't come in with the the full package of knowing everything and life's going to be perfect because actually that would be quite dull as well if everything was perfection but we I think we, you know, we come in as a soul with things that we want to learn from each lifetime. And so there are going to be points where we muck up or we don't do as well as we could have done, or we just have a learning and kind of go, oh, wouldn't, wouldn't do that the same again, or I'd do it differently this time, or oh, why did, why did I let myself do that again? But <laughs> we learn and grow then that's that's perfect yeah yeah i you know how many times do you hear people or say to yourselves right i knew that i knew that why did i yeah. do that why didn't i listen to myself right and uh it's uh yeah it's all just about it putting it into practice right like knowing that and then what do you do with that yeah yeah i mean being Let's kind and compassionate advice. to ourselves. Compassion. Yeah. What is compassion, do you think? Wow, I've got the sun coming out and I can't see. So we're back up here. <laughs> <laughs> At least you've got the sunshine. I know, it's great. <laughs> it's sort of the storms. So. <laughs> compassion to me is, is a mixture of kindness and understanding and um i guess forgiveness all rolled into one so it, it's um it's not being judgmental it's it's a state of just understanding from the heart and being open and kind yeah and i was uh, actually listening to i think it was great great the other day talking about compassion and how a lot of people believe that compassion is kind of like, you know, rolling over type thing, like just, or it, like people, people aren't really understanding the power of compassion and not becoming um, like listening to and being there for somebody without taking it on there, you know, which is something I did for many, many years. I would just feel energetically their pain and take on that energy instead of holding that space yeah. for them because that doesn't help anybody yourself or them <laughs> even though we we think that that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to be hurting like they're hurting but that's yeah that's yeah and that's kind of almost disempowering them so we can be compassionate without putting people into a victim state or a weak state it's just it is that it's that space holding and um and energetically it's a it's a it's a strong powerful frequency i 
I think, to, to hold that compassion to people. Apparently, apparently it is. Apparently compassion is one of the highest is what I understand energetically. And gratitude, obviously, but, but even compassion is one step higher, they were saying, which um, I think we've lost a lot of compassion for people because we, you know, maybe we've had the experience of, you know, I've had where you, you know, take it on and then you just feel like, you know, people don't know how to be compassionate and not to take it on. Mm. Or, you know, okay. without, you know, instead of I feel sad for you or, you know, I empathize with where you're at. You know, I can only imagine what you're going through. Not, but I think what we would usually, or what I would do is, I would go right into and feel where they're feeling. And then apparently our bodies think that that happened to us, right? Because yeah. we're putting ourselves through that energy as well while we're listening to them. So it's kind of a very important um, tool. <laughs> yes, being able to take, take that stand back and not pick up on other people's energy is, um, is, is really important. And also it's, I do think it disempowers people when we kind of step into into their space and their um, if it's a lower frequency energy. So whether whether they're in a I don't know a, a place of feeling like they're a victim or if they're really sad and and it's the best thing we can do is just kind of be there to hold to listen to understand be non judgmental as much as we can and as humans we're quite used to being judgmental. Um, but but to hear without judgment, just to hear what hear what they're going through. But yeah, don't take it on because you, you, your body your body is much as our body is incredible and it's really clever. It's also not very clever sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a new uh, coach and he has been giving me some amazing tools. And uh, you know, one of them is just creating. Um, uh what is the word that everybody uses there's a kind of a, a hip trending word right now um like a capsule um a container keep our, our oh, right. Containers, yeah. right um so but just really visualizing and grounding myself and then you know creating this beautiful capsule in my energetic field and you know grounding and then asking and that way when we're going out into the world especially right now with the energies we're not absorbing hopefully as much and we're not because people drain our energies too right when we're with people with a lower that are struggling it, it it's just law right that you're yeah. gonna, they're gonna be pulling from you yeah yeah so, and i think it's it's really i would i would love this kind of thing to be taught in schools for for children so that they they understand about their, you know, we've all got an energetic frequency. We've all got a, a vibration and, you know, the HeartMath Institute is amazing for, for the science behind that. And there is a lot of science. It's not, it's not woo stuff. It's, <laughs> it's some great science and you physics. You remember the same era I, can, I did, I believe, right there, just like being told by people that didn't understand what we do, right? That it was like, they're like, oh yeah. You just talk about stuff again, right? <laughs> and now it's like, no, this is scientifically bad. This is actually, you know, time time trusted and tried, tested, and true, right? This yeah. actually is scientifically bad. Like this is not just a thing that I'm yapping about. This is actually this works. <laughs> Try it, right? But I think yeah. you're, you know, stepping out of society and everybody wants to not not do that because it's the judgment. Yeah, but I, th I think you know, if, if we if we all knew what kind of energy we were emanating from our bodies, we'd all hopefully we'd all shift it so that it's a a nicer energy. And you, I just think if everyone radiated love for a day, could you imagine how incredible the world would be on that day if everyone just stayed in that frequency of love, um, peace, content, you know just for a whole day so right there how how would people do that like what would they need to think about to be able to stay in love for like to have that to emanate love 
for the day, what would be a couple of tools that they could think about when they're, you know, being shifted or being triggered into something else that's going on, that they could shift back to a place of love? What would you, what are a couple of your key things? Oh, there are so many tools. <laughs> what are a couple of your things? Um, I actually find that journaling can be really useful. Um, just writing can, it taps into a different part of our brain. So rather than trying to process everything in a, what I would call a really just a headspace, um, we get very stuck in our heads and, and actually what we want to be doing is coming down into our hearts. So sometimes just writing, if you're in a really low place, just writing and journaling and letting it all out and then um, writing more positive stuff. For, for me, I tend to meditate and come very much out of my head, down into my heart. And I imagine my heart really connecting with universal energy. So you can call it God, you can call it a source, you can call it the higher consciousness. You know, we've got a million one names for yeah. this greater energy, but connecting in with that and literally feeling it expanding out and knowing that we're all just souls having an experience and all the other stuff at the end of the day doesn't really matter. Yeah. It really That's doesn't matter. to understand though, because I think I know that, and I have like even my best girlfriend, she still can't grasp the fact that that is a thing. She doesn't understand that we are energy and eternal because that's not what she's experiencing. And she's yeah. not experienced or had the understanding or, you know, maybe just, you know, when the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, you know, she's just maybe not ready. I mean, I mean whatever that is, but of course I always have to try to explain to her, <laughs> you know, hey, watch this, right? Um, I don't know how my friends put up with me. <laughs> really, right? Because you when carry you're not, on with your mission. <laughs> right? Because when you're not uh, when you're not ready to hear it or or it's just blah 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 blah, right? Yeah, um, yeah. but and it's it's hard if you if your reality is not not reflecting anything great, then it yeah, it's really hard to kind of think, well, I'll just I'll just be in a different frequency and everything will change but but the more we practice that the more we practice those emotions because our emotions impact our physical health they impact our reality um and again there's a lovely lot of science around that but the more that we focus on different thoughts because the thoughts create a feeling which creates a vibration, which creates a reality, because it's all quantum physics, quantum okay. science. It's all, it's all. And I think what I love at the moment is that the, the science and the spirituality are amalgamating or they're, they're supporting each other. Yes, yes. And thank God for that, because what we actually really need to do is change out all of our thought patterns, really. And it's a process because we're not aware of how negative we are. <laughs> I always say, right, that, that just floors me. The, uh, I've heard anywhere from 50 to 80,000 thoughts a day we're having. Like, no wonder we are exhausted at the end of the day. Like, seriously. Yeah. And they're usually the same thoughts we had yesterday. And when you tap in and start listening to that, I've been... Uh, reading some chapters from Michael Singer's The Untethered Soul. Oh, um, amazing. Yeah. You know, it really, really gave me that understanding of, of how it is separated up, like how to wrap your head around the who am I and the, that we are, we're the consciousness that's inside this body. We're not yeah. the mind. We're not, it's like, it's like a computer chip, right? It goes <laughs> 50 to 80,000 thoughts a day. It's, and, and we believe that those thoughts are all real because we're thinking that because we heard it once or twice. And then we, 
and then it's in our head apparently and then because it's in our head then because then we're not even questioning ourselves about um, anyways i've been busy busy working listening and uh, changing out stories and patterns and beliefs and it's quite uh it's quite a thing it's yeah it's a process but it's really worth it because if we're continuing like you said right those we're we're broadcasting that and yeah and it's it's almost to me it's almost like deprogramming ourselves from all the junk that's been put in there um and the more the more aware we are of, of those thoughts and kind of grabbing hold of them going oh why why am I thinking that what is it that's making me think that or where does where did that thought originate from or or oh I just thought something really really mean about that person what are, what is that reflecting in me or where does that meanness come from or why why have I made that judgment or you know just really questioning our thoughts and and for me it's like I kind of unraveling like you know what what's made me think like that is it something that happened when I was a kid was it something someone said to me when I was a child and it's it's kind of really ingrained in there or is that person just reflecting something in me because we have to know it to see it so yeah. what yeah. what is it reflecting in me what can I you know what can I learn from this where did you learn that you have to ask these questions because this is something that I wish that I had known for a long time I, you know what? I love the sun but for some reason it's not working for me right now <laughs> um, asking the asking questions is is something that I have just learned is invaluable and asking the right questions like yeah, I would yeah. ask you know, boy, I must have screwed over a lot of people because shit, <laughs> like just keep, you know, what's next? What's coming up? Like, could there be anything, right? And well, you're asking that question, you're going to get more of it, right? Because, but I didn't understand that even though I knew the information that I know, right? It's, um, it's, where did you learn that you need to ask questions like that? Because it's, it's a, it really can shift you quickly yeah I think it's a mixture of um I'm a well-being coach so when I did my coaching training obviously that's all question based um I trained in a an energy modality called EAM which is the energy alignment method and that's very much about again questions but going deeper questions and I think it's it's, it's a culmination of many things um and doing some shadow work so sort of studying a few people about the shadow work and and that I think it's really from looking at the shadow work that you I kind of thought oh yeah these are just my my shadows popping up and they just require some addressing and some attention and um how can I move that shadow or change it or lose it and replace it with something that's going to be much easier to live with and make my life more peaceful what is can you give us an explanation of shadow shadow so shadows are um i guess it's the it's the darker side of of us so we've we've all got multiple shadows we've got multiple shadow personalities um caroline miss is amazing on archetypes and and shadows so i've read sort of quite a lot of her work um your shadows are the bits of you that you don't really want to acknowledge most of the time <laughs> so they tend to be the more limiting parts the more negative parts so um if you've got let's say the victim and we've we've all got aspects of victim in us i don't know any human that... oh my goodness <laughs> i i have been battling the victim for four years but i feel like i finally um came out of the rabbit hole on it it's it's a big one because huge. yeah because that is happening what are you talking about that that's not happening <laughs> <laughs> right? you're, you're experiencing that it's um and it's a societal thing we don't know that we have to not see that to take we're giving our power away as soon as we're blaming somebody else and yeah. and then even knowing that 
if you're seeing them, it's so hard to not see them as doing that to you because they're doing that to you. So yeah, <laughs> I really, 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 I, I battled with myself over this and created lots and lots of situations for me to see my victim shadow. Aban abandonment was, um, was my one big shadow that I was struggling to find that dark, dark place in my belly that you don't know what it is, right? And, yeah. and we think that we, somehow we think that we don't want anybody to see that because we think we're broken or, or bad or it, it's all just these thoughts. They're not even real. <laughs> it's not even real. It's like freaking ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, once you get to the bottom, it's like, okay, it was that? Seriously? All of that was that? <laughs> we're so attached to it. <laughs> yeah, and we're unconscious about it. And, and, yeah. and again, having all that information that I've had and you know, I don't know that I've, I've really worked on any shadows until as of the last four years. I would, I would say the bulk of mine has been over the, probably the last four years as well. So, um, and I think we avoid it for a long time because we don't, we don't want to go there because it's, it's not always pleasant because it's, it's the bits of us that aren't so great sometimes, but they're really normal. We've all got them. Well, and I wanted to get rid of mine. I just didn't know how, like, I didn't know what it was. I couldn't see it. I couldn't find it. It was like, okay, you know, like, I want to release this. I want to get past this. I don't want to keep doing this again, right? Because we are doing patterns and, and the, you know, looks different. <laughs> Whole situation is different. Underlying thing, feeling core of it is the same. And yeah. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, right? It's so difficult, it was so difficult for me to, to get my power back. I just kept rolling about, rolling, rolling on a floor, <laughs> rolling on a ball in the floor and, you know, just being like, Wah. you know, why, why, you know, why are you doing this? Why, why, why is that happening? Instead of, you know, oh, do you, I have come across a great, um, information as of late and access consciousness oh yeah well i don't know why i've never come across this thing <laughs> it's so awesome with the bars pardon with the bars with the bars yeah. right i know i did a podcast with this and uh of course she was really good she was like ringing the bars right and i'm like excuse me, like, what are we talking about? Like, I really have not heard about it, but holy cow, uh, Dane, how do, you, how do you say his last name? Here, her, here, uh, anyways. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of looked at access consciousness of quite a few years ago and um, I haven't looked at it recently, so. So a couple of really great things that I learned as of just the past few days from watching and learning from what they're having to say is that 98% of what we're feeling energetically in our body, when we're feeling anxious and agitated, or we're just feeling heavy and depleted or whatever it is we're feeling is not ours. Mm -hmm. We are picking it up from everybody, the universe, even if we're not seeing these people, or, you know, it could be, you know, from all over the world. And of course, now we are so connected to the whole world. Whereas a long time ago, you know, you say China and it was like, it was a far away away. Now it's like China lives with us, right? Yeah, and it, 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 it feels to me that the, the world feels like it's getting smaller by the day. Right. It's so energetically, you know, we're, we're all connected, but it literally feels like it, it's just getting this smaller and smaller place. Yeah. Day by day, and um, there's so much fear and negativity out there. There's also an awful lot of love, um, but we just need more love. <laughs> yes, because yes. We are all picking up on that heaviness. Promoting that. They're promoting fear right now, and, and yes. people that are not aware of how amazing they are inside. <laughs> 
are hook, line, and sinker buying into that, right? So anyways, he, he was explaining to me, or I was understanding exactly what you do with asking these questions. And if you ask this question all day, you will, anyways, the question is, what part of this is mine? So whenever you're feeling any way, heavy, agitated, just, you know, or you're running thoughts, which part, what part of this is mine? And energetically, I can't imagine, or I couldn't imagine what it, the shift that I was feeling in my body. Um, and then the next statement is, um, uh, what part, or, you, you know, the part that is not yours to return to sender with consciousness. Um, he has this clearing statement, which was very weird. It was a bunch of words, uh, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod. pod all the shorts. <laughs> A long time since I've, since I've done that. Beyonds. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, you know, this is probably the first time I've even actually been able to say that, but probably because you jumped in to say a couple, because I always forget. But you don't have to say all of that. He says you just have to say pod, pop, pod, pop, pod, pop. And how weird is that? But the fact that it is weird, we're not able to break it down in our mind, but energetically, it starts to, whatever the somebody says something that's negative or Pod, 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 pod. If you just say that, it it clears that so that you energetically don't um, absorb that energetically, right? So having that awareness of how much we are absorbing just in listening to a show or passing, you know, by people or in our cars driving or whatever it is, it's this constant energy frequencies. As we are, you know, broadcasting, so is everybody else. Yeah. And as the world is becoming closer and closer, it's really intense right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think having that understanding and having like just that, those little two, how hard is that? Right. What part of this is mine? What part of this is theirs? What part of this is mine that I think is theirs? <laughs> <laughs> but but they say just to ask yourself questions you don't need to come up with the answers but just that constant question energetically unwinds uh patterns of anyways um i think that i think there's a lot of value in that because i feel energetically there is in the last few days for myself yeah yeah and i our energy is so powerful that we can we can move things so quickly and and that's kind of what i think is amazing is that we once we're aware of any kind of negative pattern or negative thoughts or whatever it is we don't actually have to hold on to it or spend hours and hours and hours and hours or weeks and days clearing it you know there's so many ways that we can shift the energy and just having that conscious awareness or even just sometimes making a decision and going well, I don't want to hang on to this anymore. I'm just going to let it go. Move it on out, move it out of my body or just say a releasing statement. And then for me, I like I always like to put something positive in afterwards. And once I've released something, bringing in something that's much higher frequency and using the, the I am statement. So that's- What you want like, to have in your life. <laughs> Instead of spending all that time thinking about what, what is going wrong for us, or <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I'm just like, yeah, I am amazing, or I am, you know, I am love, or I am filled with love, or I love myself. And that takes practice to be able to to accept that for ourselves because we have not been taught that for our lives, right? <laughs> I am is huge. I mean, you just say it. They say that I am is is God. I am. Yeah. It's, it's that, the God that, statement, isn't it? It's the God frequency. That's the I part am. of us inside that, that consciousness, the I am consciousness, that is the connection of the whole God, Jesus, universe, whatever your source, divine source is, right? It's, uh, and you, you can tell when you say it, right? I am, right? So we don't want to be saying I am depressed. I am sad. Actually, that was thing <laughs> that I learned was um, my coach said, you know, I quit smoking. I made a choice to quit smoking. So then I made a choice to not be depressed. And it's like, 
you know, life's just so stupid and simple, right? Yeah. Like, make a decision, choose, right? We need to make, we need to decide, we need to choose. I choose, I decided. Yeah, we are incredible beings. You know, we've, we've, we've got, we're sovereign beings. We're expressions of divine having a human experience and, and actually, what an amazing thing, what an amazing opportunity. We've got so much that we can experience when we live in that place of appreciation and joy and positivity and I am. And and when you kind of, sometimes when I think about the thoughts that we think, I'm just like, well, that's ridiculous. Why, why would I spend my time? Why would I waste my precious time on this incredible earth being stuck in that kind of emotion when actually I can change it and we're all we're all going through this big shift at the moment whether we like it or not <laughs> that's right um I was speaking with a girlfriend that I haven't spoken to for a while and uh she shared with me that they have lost three family friends last month some people can't see their way through this no and I hadn't made any vlogs or I always get in my own way of, you know, you know, we, and I think we all are like, you know, what, you know, what, you know, does it matter? Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, you go through because it's old thought patterns. And I had asked if this was, you know, what I, is this my purpose? Is this what I'm to be doing, like to carry on with my podcast and, and the process that I've started here, you know, cause it is my passion and I love it, and da, 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 right? But, you know, you're, you're putting yourself out there. And, and then I think that whole uh, judgment of ourselves and judgment of others, you know, you, you, you feel that frequency because it is such a huge, um, part of our society right and anyways i heard that from her that that next day and i was like okay that's my answer because i had many dark nights of the soul and after losing um my daughter and you know, it was my dad then my daughter then my sister and it was in this very short period of time and then my oldest granddaughter i haven't seen and, since my daughter passed and like just you know and then family friends it was just all in this real small segment right it was just so much and I wasn't able to process it and I'd had a really bad fall head first into some cement office swing feet flying in the air you know it's like I'm such a I do this stuff <laughs> anyways it's I've never had a concussion before that I was aware of but it it really rocked me. Like I, mm. my eyes seeing, uh, just the brain not functioning. And then you get all those traumas and they're all the concussions of trauma. And then every death's a trauma and, you know, interactions that it, all these, and it was just, uh, yeah, it was just too much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So knowing that, and then hearing that it was, it was my, you know, they say ask and it is given. And I have really, really had an experience of that. That is so true. Yeah. I mean, if you ask, you are given, it's just, we don't ask. Yeah. Like I didn't know to ask, we hear that, but, and then some people ask and they're looking right away, you know, well, I ask, where is it? Right? Yes. <laughs> so you actually have to get into, like you were saying, the gratitude and, uh, you know, the feeling of compassion and, and when you're in that state everything's coming to you right yeah. the good stuff and, and to be open to receiving as well because sometimes we ask and then we're not even open to receiving whatever is given oh my goodness that's so huge and how do you how do you allow it how do you how do you receive because that is so big uh, it's, it's taken me quite a lot of practice i have to say <laughs> Me too. I think we're soul <laughs> sisters, you and I seem to be very much the same uh, path of experiences that way. Maybe it's the path that, that people experience. But how how do you how do you when people are asking and they're and then they're thinking, okay, I am looking. So how do I how do I allow things in? I think 
one of the biggest secrets is is detaching from what from any outcome because when we ask with our own human kind of prerequisites so we kind of ask with um yeah i'm asking for something but it's got to be this or it's got to be this or it's got to be this or i want it presented in this way then you kind of you you're, you're wiping it out you're wiping out the, the ask anyway with all your demands and or all your your human attachments so kind of that that ask and then just trusting it's trust isn't it it's it's and without expectation or attachment because if we become attached to something and we kind of expect it to appear in a certain way or in a certain time or in a certain form the universe doesn't always deliver in the way that we think it's going to so it's 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 losing that yeah that expectation becoming open-minded and when something does come in kind of going oh i'll receive that it might not be what i wanted in the way i wanted or i was expecting but trusting that what you've been given is actually for your highest good at that moment in time and as humans i think we we think that we know what our highest good is but you know, <laughs> Because our highest good is very skewed with our with all our thoughts and our emotions and experiences. When when something that's for our highest good is is not always clear, but it's steering us in a different direction. Yeah, and I have found that when I ask, and like you say, you have to detach, right? But then I, I was learning. Okay, I am open to receive. Right? It was like I was literally opening my arms because I came to that awareness that I wasn't then um, I would ask but when you're noticing that things are coming in then you are telling the universe that things are coming in yeah if you're looking then you're going to continue to look so so then it was like okay well what can I do to okay so I'm going to allow it in so I'm going to open up my arms and and and, and say I am willing to allow it. yeah that in but then what I started to notice was what I would get would be so much greater and grander than anything I'd ever asked for <laughs> like it's actually worth detaching because yeah. we have no idea how amazing um, the gifts are that can come to us through through you know the source guy and you know God what they give is is above and beyond what we even have any idea of, you know, we, we're here in this little material world thinking it's, you know, I'm going to get a car. <laughs> like, no, you get the car, like it, it, the car comes along with it maybe, but there's, you get this, this gift of this experience of, of being right. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, and then, you know, and to start small, right. I think yeah, I don't, that you're not so attached to, to just kind of practice it. Yeah, it's it's quite, and seeing the fun in it is because it's it's quite a fun game. And I think it's, 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 when, it's when we get so hooked up on it and I kind of talk to my clients about, you know, intuition, because again, it's, it's, it's very similar kind of when you, if you're in business and you're feeling a bit stuck or whatever, and you're just like, oh, just... I'm waiting for the next idea to pop in. I'm, I'm, I'm asking, I've asked, I've asked for guidance, I've asked my higher self to just tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. And then your intuition might say, go for a walk. So you go for a walk going, right, I'm walking, I'm walking. Here I am, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that intuition to come in, that guidance, because I came out for a walk and it's, it's got all that attachment and expectation and that's heavy and it, it just stops the process. But, but when you kind of just, as you say be and just start to live in the moment because we only actually have this moment and enjoy each moment for what it is so that we become more um more magnetic and more attractive because we're experiencing joy and appreciation just for what it is and then things come in so i had a um i needed some money to buy a new car 
and it was kind of quite out of the blue and it was it was all connected with a a breakup and it was you know it was, it was a bit of a messy time and I was just and I just kind of in my head going god I'm gonna have to buy a new car I'd love however much to just you know have, that would be great if that came in and and then it, it, it was just gone it was gone and, so, and the next day I had a phone call and was offered the exact amount of money to buy a new car and you know what? That's how it happens. And it sounds ridiculous and like, oh yeah, whatever. But it actually does. It does start to come out like that. It, it's such, yeah. And, and you don't need to figure out how or why or whatever. Just be open to the possibility that there is a bigger, grander scheme going on that than what we could ever even imagine, right? Yeah. And it came from a place of desire. And I think desire is such a different frequency to want or need you know when we come from that place of I want this or I need this then it's again it's, it's a heavy frequency it's a heavy energy yeah. but when we come from that place of oh that that would be really nice or that would be really fun it's got that lightness to it that playfulness and and that's that carries a completely different energy with it right and that's what you set out yeah and and I think that that is being set more from the heart right energy than yeah. Uh, yeah, the lower energies that we carry. Yeah. Of the need. <laughs> Scared, <laughs> fear, not enough, right? All that. All of that. All of that. It's like carrying bags of shopping around, I always say. You know, when we carry yeah. around all those heavier energies, just pop them down. What part of this is mine? <laughs> That's Whatever. not my shopping. <laughs> What's not mine, send back to the center with consciousness. <laughs> I love that. It's such a great little gift, right? Yeah. We, actually, right now, I just feel lighter. Like it, it's, it's, you know, I think we need to do this all the time. Just the universal energies are, are there. They're there. They're powerful. They're, they're there to support us. Um, and, yeah, I just, I'd love more people to be able to, understand it and use it and um what a gift we, we we could share with everyone we are that is our intention right yes. to let them know that we you know have been doing this for probably a lifetime <laughs> probably <laughs> many lifetimes to be honest <laughs> yeah here's some really great tools that can kind of give you some instant um instant results right to to start to play with to help yourself like kind of immediately like it doesn't have to you don't have to go be a monk and sit on and meditate it right we don't have to do all that anymore it's like i don't know they they have figured it out you know all of the it's just it's just so there's so much information and so much so much uh, i don't know so much to share about how how powerful we are right yeah, yeah. and i think the more the, the more we come into our hearts and out of our heads, that's that's where the power and the magic is. It's it's when we come from that heart heart place in it within ourselves. Um, we get too stuck in our heads, and and it's coming down into that that heart, which is a primary brain after all. Right. <laughs> they just found that out too, not that long ago, that the heart has a brain, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um. And I think like what, you know, what you're talking about is, you know, energetically, right? How important like our thoughts that we're having are. So if you're talking about somebody did this or you're judging them, you're ju you've just taken yourself right out of that space of the magic. Anytime we're telling a story or we're thinking blah, 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 or whatever, you know, that we do unconsciously yeah. all day long, you know, as soon as we can catch ourselves and just be in that presence, just even for practice, even just for as long as you can, while you're aware, right? Yeah, and, I mean, just literally, you can, you can feel the difference if you, if you sit and think about someone that you you really don't like for some reason or someone that you feel has wronged you or you know a bad experience that you've had you sit and think about it for, for five minutes 
oh, how do you feel? And then if you sit, sit and think about someone that you really love or someone who makes you laugh or brings lightness into your life, um, how do you feel after that? And I do, there's a great um, kinesiology muscle testing technique that I use. And I used to do a lot of um, sort of well-being sessions in schools. And, and I love doing this with teens because it tends to sort of really open their eyes. But you get you put your arm out to the side and get someone to press it. I'm sure you know this one. And you just kind of test how how what its natural strength is and then say something really negative seven times in a row and you lose your physical strength and it, it takes a minute literally takes a minute and then you say something positive and you get you know quite often the arm is stronger and I think how quick is that to shift our emotions and our physical strength the body reacts that quickly that quickly and even quicker now I don't don't, don't even know if you'd need to do it seven times now yeah, probably three but, times is probably enough but <laughs> Uh, yeah, like uh, one of the other things that uh, uh, Dr. Dave was talking about was uh, just asking yourself, is this true for me? Like it might be true for somebody else. It doesn't matter. Is this true for me? And you'll know whether or not it is or not just because of how you feel that you will feel heavy if it's not. If what somebody's telling you is feeling like that, it's probably not true for you. And, and it's okay if it's true for them, it doesn't matter. But just knowing that what, just having those little tiny tools. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, the question I always say, what would my higher self do now? What would love do? What would love do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the other thing that has really come into, um, I'm really congested all of a sudden, um, really come into my awareness is with all the fear running. Um, as a child, I was in fear all the time. And one of the mantras that I said to soothe myself as, as soon as I learned it <laughs> was where there is love, there is no fear. Because it's like, and I, and then I would say, you know, it's like turning the light. I just do this with my little head, right? Because I was scared of the dark. It's like turning the light <laughs> on in the dark room, right? They can't coincide. And so just having, you know, when we go into fear, right? It's, it's not true. They're thoughts. And they're usually thoughts that we think, and then we think that might happen. And then we think it enough, and then all of a sudden it starts to manifest. And, and just knowing, like, what if we were creating and thinking about what we actually really want to feel. Like, how does it feel? Do you know what you want? Like, well, I never actually had asked that question. I have all of these children and uh, I never really was like, okay, well, what do I want? I don't know. Like, I, I have what I want, um, but asking yourself all the time, right? What do I want? What do yeah. I want? Right, because we're half the time, well, I think women for sure, we are, always trying to, um, you know, aid everybody else, right? Be the, the, the <laughs> helper or the, you know, as we are, um, you, know, you were saying it earlier, it's not, it's not uh, helping anybody. <laughs> we were, like, to rescue guiding, guiding lights, that's, that's, that's a way to be. Yes, turning our light on, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I feel there's there's a lot of light that needs to be shone around at the moment. Um, a lot of and so maybe we could ask the question of how can I shine more light on the world? How can I shine more light, you know, on the government or the the people that are dying from the COVID nineteen? How can like I guess that if we were asking these questions, even though we don't know what we don't need to come up with the answer. Yep. It energetically puts out to the universe that that is, that is a thing, that, that is co our consciousness is actually aware that we, if we can think it, then apparently we can have it, they say, right? Because we're, so we are now creating a new world, really, right? And there's, 
I believe there's an amazing new world waiting to be birthed at the moment and we're we're kind of in the in the labor the labor process which is really uncomfortable and painful and and difficult and can be dangerous um but but we are kind of we're witnessing the the, the birthing of an incredible new new way of being yeah where all the the old what we call the old paradigm ways of kind of the fear-based living and the control and everything being your you know your your value being signified by your worth or your car or the size of your house or you know all of those things falling away and us and actually everyone realizing that we're all human beings at the end of the day we're all humans and we've got an amazing planet that is supporting us if we treat her kindly and lovingly we've got these amazing bodies that we come into that are our real homes if we treat them kindly and lovingly and um there is a very different way of us all being but we're just in that uncomfortable birthing process are we ever <laughs> yeah and and I think that's great that you shared that because I don't know that a lot of people really understand that that is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Like it is, we are, the earth is at the fastest, highest frequencies that it's ever experienced. And like they show it secularly, you know, the global warming, it's just part of it. If you look back through, through it, it's all part of the, the secular, right? Yeah. But yeah. The, the earth has never vibrated or had energies this fast ever. And so we really are, um, the earth is actually, it's ascending and you can choose to, to lose all that old garbage, but it, it's, everybody has to do the work, right? It has to be a choice. You have to decide. You have to decide. Yeah. You have to, yeah, you have, to, it, it is a choice. And, and I, I guess not everyone's come in to, to make that choice in this lifetime, but you know, I think there is that opportunity for choice and we always have free will anyway. So, um, and I, I guess for, for anyone who's kind of starting to think and feel differently, it can be, it can be quite, quite a lonely process if, if you suddenly start becoming more aware or you're, you feel your, your energy shifting or you, you suddenly start connecting more with God or Jesus or spirituality when it's not been part of your way before and suddenly it's a, it can be a bit of a shock to the system but I think just knowing that there are I just see it as loads of open arms and open hearts kind of waiting to welcome you into that process but we all have to take absolute responsibility for ourselves and if we don't no one's going to save you right you have to and, and, the, and I think that um, like you were saying earlier like the victim and the forgiveness like if we let go of the victim then we're forgiving that person and ourselves because we're dropping the story and when we drop the story and we don't think about it anymore then we have that space right that we don't yeah. have. We, we haven't known i don't think right that's why yeah. people start to meditate <laughs> create <Yeah>. that space <laughs> but i think maybe you know also you were saying um you know that we learn so much when we're down mm. and, and, and it hurts and it's uncomfortable but that's where we get our biggest gifts right or i know for myself um i smacked my head three freaking times three i <laughs> literally fell out of the trailer after i fell out of my head in the cement then i fell out of our trailer head first trying to grab the baby going out saved her but landed straight down my head again and i smacked it one other time it's like are you freaking kidding me like okay what <laughs> you know i get it you're trying to tell me something right <laughs> like, wake up you know sorry so the earth being so uncomfortable is is i think we're here it's doing that to all of us to hopefully awaken as many because hopefully if you're uncomfortable enough you will stop looking outside and go within where yeah. and that's the only place where you can get healing right is to decide yeah. to decide and, and yeah take our power go within it's all it's all within 
and yeah everything we seek is actually within us we just have to it's a thought clear some of the crap out of the way to get to it <laughs> but i think that they've they've really come down to simplify it now right like we've done all like courses and courses and courses and this and that blah, blah, blah. but you don't have to have all that you just need to understand that what you think and what you feel is what you become right yeah, yeah. It's what you live so what are you thinking about yeah and it's most of it's not real so and it's not real. It's like these, yeah, the fear, that's what I found out. It's amazing what, when you start to pay, listen and pay attention to your thoughts. Oh my, very disturbing. <laughs> like I didn't know I was that, that negative and that uh, depressed. I had no idea. I thought I was a happy person. Yeah, I don't think so. Right. It, it's really incredible. That, and I think that most of us, because we don't know, it's just running stories of fear, fear, fear. And uh yeah, when I was listening, I was when I started to listen, I was like, oh my, I think I went into a bit of a depression just having to that, that that was what I was having to uh, you know, that was my work ahead of me was uh, replacing that program. Program work well done. <laughs> oh my god, the best the, it's so worth it, right? Because even if you get that that I don't know that you when you connect and, and you're floating down the river, like everybody knows those days when everything's going your way, right? You just, you know, we've all had those days. Well, what if you could just create that yourself and, and took that and knew how to do that? That's what we're talking about, right? Yeah. That's all we're talking about. Living, living in flow, living in alignment. Like I didn't do the church thing growing up. I didn't have any, um, my parents had bad experiences and so I was ignorant to all of it. I knew that there was some like God, but I didn't know, I didn't have a relationship with any like particular, like Jesus and people would say all that, but I just didn't know it. I didn't have that experience. And so the couple of experiences that I did have through going with other people, to me, it was like, okay, well, I don't get to go to the bar on the weekend. <laughs> I thought I gave up smoking. I was a you know, smoke back then. I thought that I had to be somebody different to have that in my life because I, well, I, I just didn't understand it, right? And I think that some, I think there is some of the religions kind of do, do, do that, right? I put the fear of the devil or you know, hell into, I know they did that to my daughter. She was having more nightmares about hell and the devil and stuff than she was having loving thoughts about God. It was very, uh, very sad situation, actually. Uh, I think when, when I talk about, I think both of those, when we, when we talk about God or Jesus, it's, it's actually got nothing to do with religion. Right. But it's, that's what I didn't know. And now actually I have this all day, every day relationship with these incredible, and, it, and it's just because I ended up on my knees. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you hear about that or saw it in a movie a couple of times. <laughs> or, <right? laughs> it happens a lot. It does happen a lot. You've got to kind of, sometimes you have to reach that point to, to really connect in. Not everyone has to. So it's, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily a strict rite of passage that you have to end up on your knees to, to um to get that that shift but you know sometimes that that is the way it happens but it's it's not a religious connection it's it's a much more spiritual connection it's 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 a it's a consciousness rather than a a religion and and you know i just think certainly christianity you know there's a lot of like god is judgmental and yes um, it's it, it was not a good experience for us. <laughs> My daughter wanted to go to go to the private school at the Christian church there. And we did that. And I did all the classes at the Alpha. And the, anyways, she was uh, in the principal's office. She was she was having a nightmare. She was going to hell. And oh my lord, it was just interesting. And um then I understood what my dad was saying. You know, people lie, cheat, steal all week, and on Sunday they're forgiven. He he just he was just done with it, you know, because yeah there were so many people that were doing that. There wasn't a lot of true authentic, authentic people that were actually really having the relationships and the experience. Um, but you know what? I actually have this relationship with Jesus um, 
which took me, I, I felt just weird even saying the name because you hear, you know, people in the churches, right? And like, I don't know, it was kind of sounded goofy to me. Like, like I was very cool, just so you know. Um, so that just, <laughs> but you know what? A lot of my friends and stuff, they, they are the same now, right? But we went to this intuition weekend in Sedona um, and it was like an Easter weekend, full moons. But anyways, it was quite a, an incredible experience. And we were doing some intuitive work to, to just have whatever come through. And I actually had, uh, and I was like, okay, I think that was, and that my, my body was, and there was, and there was this energy that was coming through me. And when I was sharing, I felt like I couldn't even say the name Jesus, because I don't know that I ever had, but I said, I think that was, I knew. Yeah. And one of the other classmates who does have an actual authentic relationship in this world of, of you know, all of that, uh, she looked at me and she said, you absolutely did. Like she, I had it, right? And I was like, and so now I call and talk and, you know, just momentarily, just the thought, right? But he's a really cool dude, right? We hang out, is, and when I think of, or I am wanting some support, it's there's this feeling of like, he's probably just as cool as I was back then. And he's, you know, <laughs> and there is, I don't have to give up or be somebody different. No, no, exactly. That's what you think. That's what you believe. You believe yeah. that you're not, that, you know, you've got to hide all these things. If you're going to go to church, you can't be this, you can't be that. And if somebody finds out, like it's such a ridiculous game we play with ourselves. Yeah. You've just got to be you and. And it's just an energy. It's just a thought. And then, uh, and then, and then receiving the, yeah, receiving the feeling of, of the love. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I really understand that when, when you, when you step into that love that comes from that yeah I, I always think it's for me it's 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 God's love that you know sometimes I just I feel it and it's the most incredible feeling and experience because it's all encompassing and it's just nothing else matters right it's just like oh here we are just in this place it's and, like the best drug or drinking party you'd ever had and it's this feeling yeah. and it's just momentarily and it's just in the middle of wherever when yeah. you're able to be open enough to receive it yeah yeah so once you have that experience there's no going back right you're addicted <laughs> yeah because it's, it's it's just the best thing and and we can all we can all have that experience every single one of us has has got that ability to tap into that yeah and i think with the earth ascending we will have a more we'll have more of it more of it right like apparently it's uh just more of a space of love like everybody will be supporting each other instead of competing with each other and you know love unity collaboration working from the heart well, working from a place of service just yeah Respect. it's a thing it's actually a thing yeah <laughs> yeah and once you've experienced it you know and you can't unknow that there's many things you can't unknow once you know <laughs> yeah and so trying to share that and, and just some quick tools for people to have that, just that, that opening, that experience so that they know for themselves that it, it's a thing, right? Yeah. So for me, meditation is, is great. Just, it just creates that time and that space because we lead busy lives and, you know, just whether it's meditation, whether it's walking, just walking out in nature, whether it's just, hugging a tree I love hugging trees you know you get a lot from a tree <laughs> <laughs> I just got a visual <laughs> I love it um so meditation for people who don't know how to meditate it's uh, a little bit challenging at first for people because it's it doesn't work right because the thoughts are not stopping so yeah. any any suggestions there for for people who are 
say, okay, well, I'll try to meditate. Like, what do I got to do? What's the best thing? So I think, first of all, meditation is not just sitting there cross-legged chanting on. Um, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions that you have to sit. In, you don't have to sit in any particular way at all. You can sit how you like. You can, I think, there's no hard and fast rules and your mind will be busy and it will chuck loads of things in. So you can just literally focus on your breath. So really concentrating on breathing in, breathing out, it slows everything down. There's hundreds and thousands of guided meditations on YouTube. Listen to one of them. You know, sometimes people taking you through, it helps you switch off. Some people sitting in silence is great or just some really nice calm music. Just going for a walk and noticing the leaves or the colors or the sky or the birds. It's anything that stills the mind. So it, it's just, and, and when the thoughts kick in, because they will do, no matter how long you've been meditating, you, you suddenly, my brain will suddenly start being, mm, it, 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 it. And I'm just like, oh, just kind of acknowledge the thoughts and then just let them go. Or just say, not, not right now. Yeah. I'll come back to you later. Yeah. There's, there's, there's many ways of meditating. There's, there's, it doesn't have to be, there's no one rule fits yeah. everybody. And I think that that is really good for people to know who don't know, because, you know, it is a hip thing now to, to meditate or to do yoga, but there's a lot of people that still are like meditate. Okay. What is that? They don't know. So they don't, because they don't know, they don't kind of, you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. yeah so you, you don't want to just staring at a flame you don't ask because then <laughs> people know you don't know. <laughs> right <laughs> and we don't want that uh, so that yeah yeah I remember when I started I would uh, see how many seconds in between another thought like if there would like when I'd be driving or whatever right I'd be like you're thinking and then when I'd become conscious of it I'd be like okay so how how long before the next thought jumps in or whatever right was yeah there's just so many little tricks isn't there yeah yeah well just light a candle stare at the flame yeah just get absorbed by the flame and you know watch it and it's it's that is really calming and really yeah. great for stilling the mind so it's, yeah many many ways i think uh i think my new favorite one is the heart math um the breathing into the heart yeah five seconds and out five and three minutes of that and you're in heart brain coherence and in that, that puts your brain into gamma, which is where all of the incredible, magical things can happen. Yeah. And three minutes? Yeah. Three minutes, seriously. Who can't yeah. breathe their heart for three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> right? Give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Well, what a great conversation. I think we could have talked for hours and hours. <laughs> um, we're, yeah, we're an hour and a half, so I should probably wrap, wrap this up. But um, and so you're, you're coaching, are you online coaching? Are you doing, how, what, what do you have to offer to people who would like to uh, connect with you? you uh, so I do all my work online. Okay. Um, I, do, um, I do spiritual business coaching. So I do business coaching from a very energetic angle I don't do um, I'm not about strategy or step by steps it's about making business work in a way that's aligned for you but um, secretly it's actually the biggest personal development course rather than business coaching <laughs> and it's a lot of a lot of unraveling of the thoughts and the ideas and the beliefs um, so it's a lot of energy work and I also do energy healing um, where it comes from a place of empowerment so it's about releasing again thoughts anything that's not serving you so I do that online as well and I use um, a body sway technique so people are empowered and not just sitting there doing things to other people so yeah. I work very interactively all about empowerment raising our frequency um spiritual growth personal growth and um changing awesome. the world for the better good on you good on you shine that light girlfriend yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, well, let's connect down the road and, uh, you know, either contact me if you've got some uh, great new things to share, or I think uh, you got a book that you're going to write. I'm currently writing a chapter for a book. Um, interesting, a little diversification. It's all about menopause. Um, oh, well, imagine <laughs> that. Corona, menopause, life change. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. <laughs> what a great thing. <laughs> you yeah so it's all all good okay well uh let's touch base when you are ready to uh launch and uh we'll share that and chat some more <laughs> definitely chat some more we can go off on other tangents <laughs> okay, thanks sue thank you jackie it's been great Glad thank you yourself.